Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Nicholas Winden Refn's Pusher uh, in 1996. Now you may have heard of Nicholas Winden Refn um, probably through the film Drive, um, which is pretty famous, um, Bronson if you've heard of that, and really The Neon Demon. Um, the rest of his films are pretty unknown to be honest, um, you know, not much people would have heard of them, you know, Bleeder, the Pusher Trilogy being one. Um, which this is the part, this is the first part of um, the Pusher trilogy. It's only on DVD because they're so unknown, they're not really on Blu ray. Um, <clears throat> but yes, this is his debut feature film. Um, and you know, since I saw Drive and stuff, um, when I first saw that, and then I've, you know, Bronson was my first um, refing film many years ago. Um, but yes, I, I decided to explore his films, um, you know, and it, you know, it's only been a couple of months really that I've been doing this. Um, you know, and I finally saw my last um, refing film last night, and that was Bleeder, although, you know, it's out of order, um, you know, this was his second film, um, Bleeder, and that was my last film, uh, you know, that I had to watch a refin. so I decided to, you know, review some of his films over the next few weeks, well, review all of his films over the next few weeks, and then, you know, as I always do, do a ranking <coughs> from worst to best. But yes, Pusher is an interesting film, it's his first one, you know, very low budget, um, and actually, it's it's kind of this, it's it's a first of many things because it's um, firstly uh, you know Mads Mikkelsen, who of course you would only really know, um, well Hannibal and, and and Casino Royale and stuff. Uh, maybe have you seen The Hunt as well? Uh, but Casino Royale, of course, he was the main villain in that, um, and <laughs> it really that's what made him properly famous, uh, you know, over the world. Um, but this was his first film, you know, this is um, his first proper film. Um, and it's Refin's first film, so it's quite interesting. It's also one of the first Danish kind of gangster films. Um, you know, this is um, it studies the Copenhagen uh, sort of underworld. Um, but yes, it's very unique. Um, and it's the first half of the film really is very. It's got a lot of comedy in it. Um, and it's very out there and stuff. Um, the second half is more darker. Uh, so, um, but yeah, Mads Mikkelsen um, plays Tony. Tony, you say that, um, it's just said like Tony. Um, Kid Buddia um, plays Frank. And then you've also got an appearance from Refin himself, you know, as just a, a, a minor sort of, uh, you know, passerby. You've got uh, Lad Latko uh, Burek, I believe it was. Um, he plays Milo. Um, you've also got um, Lapko Laboric, Labovic, I think it was. Um, he's quite a main character, he plays Radovan. Um, and he's in like the other ones as well. Um, but yeah, Refn uses quite a lot of the same cast in, in some of these early films, and certainly the Pusher trilogy. Um, but yeah, the cast in this film is really great, you know. And uh, yeah, the characters, straight away I noticed, you know, very unique um, characters, um, especially um, Maz Mickelson's character, uh, Tony. And, you know, it's just uh, the way he, he's kind of uh, very sporadic, you know, he's very un unpredictable in this film. Um, and it makes for some great comedy, especially early on. And uh, you've also got, of course, um, the character of Frank, who's, you know, you could say the main character of this film. Uh, certainly the second half. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, they're just, they're really well written, I think. Um, you know, Refn co-wrote this film, I believe. And, you know, it's just, it's very uh, unique, the way that the characters are written. Um, and as well, of course, he uses this kind of documentary style uh, camera work and stuff, um, which I'll get on to. But, um, Yes, so straight away, you know, you're kind of drawn into this, this world, this unique world, but, you know, it's very hard-hitting as well, <clears throat> especially as the film goes on. Uh, so it's kind of this comedy-esque, but, you know, a very hard-hitting film as well. Um, and it's got loads of, you know, quirk and stuff. Um, now, uh, there is some issues with this film, though. Um, you know, mainly the, the, the film that brings this film down, you can definitely see, well, for me anyway, uh, the Refin was very still in his early stages of you know experimenting with his style. Uh, well, you could say he's, he's always done that really. Um, he's still experimenting, <clears throat> you know, with his with his latest films, you know, and stuff like Only God Forgives. It's still very experimental, you know, Neon Demon. Um, he's he's kind of just uh, you know he has different stages that he experiments with, and then you know, sometimes he he achieves something absolutely stunning, like Drive um, and Bronson. But you know, other times. Uh, kind of hits the you know hits the mark, um, but this is kind of um, the camera work I think brings it down because um, it's it's just very uh, first of all documentary style, which is sometimes great you know it can you know with the shaky cam and everything and you know just kind of 
handheld movements and stuff, it can kind of bring you in, you know, more to the world, uh, especially a low key film like this. Um, but I, I really, um, I think it's very off putting because it's very, very random. I think with some of the, <coughs> you know, the camera moves and stuff, um, and actually, yeah, the editing in general as well, um, very uh, choppy, um, but not in a great way. And you know, you, you could kind of say the camera work is naff in this film. It's not too good for the most part. Um, and it just kind of distracts. Um, it's sometimes it, you know, it does work, but sometimes that is. Most of the time, it is very. You know, I would have preferred just static shots and stuff. Um, you know, more cinematic. Uh, you know, dynamic takes and stuff. Um, but yeah, that that's one of the main flaws for me. Um, and you know, the first half is very enjoyable. You've got the you know these characters. Um, you've got quite a lot. Of, you know, tense plot as well. Um, the way things go on. Uh, with their, you know, the drug deals and stuff. Um, there was a one, uh, you know, one of the drug deals early on, which is a bit out there, but, you know, it's it kind of a bit random, you know, Mads Mikkelsen was kind of uh, pointing the gun at a couple of them. Yeah, he was, he was obviously told to do that uh, in just a, you know, out of their way. It was, yeah, it added to its charm, but, it, yeah, it wasn't necessary. Um, but, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, the first half of this film, you know, very enjoyable. Uh, I thought it was really, really good. Um, you know, the writing... Uh, just the characters, you know, the, the chemistry between, you know, Mads Mikkelsen and, and uh, Kim Bodnia. Um, it's really, really strong and it added the sense of friendship, you know, that them characters have, uh, the camaraderie. Um, and just some of the stuff that goes on is just, yeah, just really, really good. Uh, and there's some great sparks of, of uh, you know, really good comedy in there. Um, and yeah, just the way it involves you in this, this drug world. Um, the second half of the film, though, um, and this is not a spoiler. But uh, Mads Mikkelsen is not in <coughs> the second half of the film, um, and it's not a spoiler because he's in Pusher too, um, so you know he doesn't die or anything. He's just not in that that um, you know half of the film. Frank takes over his character Kim Bodnia, and things start start to take a dip. Uh, you know it's never as strong as it was in the first half. Um, <coughs> you know for me, um, mainly because yes, Frank on his own is not much of an interesting character. Um, and you know you've got some really quite powerful stuff you know that goes on uh, and it, the, some of the themes it explores uh, in that second half with Frank, uh, but generally he's not you know an interesting protagonist I, I don't think on his own in this film. You know uh, Maz Mikkelsen's character Tony was much more interesting. You know I, I could have watched the whole film you know as him as the main protagonist, um, but due to plot things that goes on you know he doesn't appear in the second half of the film. Of course he's in the second pusher so he doesn't die. Um, but yes, um, it, it is a bit. It is a bit bland, you know, the second half in in places, and and generally it's never it never picks up really uh, to be as strong as, uh, you know, that last, that first act um, and that first half really, uh, and it's quite a short film, around about ninety minutes, um, and yes, it, it you know, it, it's got some powerful stuff in that second half, as I say, and it does explore some themes and you know, masculinity and stuff, um, and just. Um, you know how someone can can occur with their life upturned, lives upturned, um, three different things like drugs and that. But as well, you know, the ending is very cut off, and to be honest, it never really, you know, come comes together at the end uh, to create, um, you know, a satisfying or, or or really having a an ending that has a real effect on you. It just kind of cuts off. Uh, it's not a strong ending. Um, it has it's got some really good stuff in in that second half. Um, and you know, there is the times it, as I say, is powerful. Um, and you know, the other actress that was in it, I can't remember her name. Uh, that's Frank's partner. Um, she was quite good in it as well. Um, yes, it wasn't. It wasn't bad or anything. It just, you know, it, it was a bit average. Um, that second half, and uh, you know, the first, you know, half of the film was really, really good. Um, I really liked it. Um, and you know it never it never picks up again really uh, once Maz Mikkelsen goes out of the film, um, but yes, yeah, so no that middle segment though you know involving all that sort of stuff is really stunning actually, um, very very powerful. Um, but yeah, I know Maz Mikkelsen is the, he's the main character in Pusher Two, um, which I'll review at some point soon. Uh, but yes, yeah, so Pusher you know it's it's a modest film. Um, it is a debut future feature and it does you know show that you know it, it does show. You know, very experimental stuff going on. Um, mainly, you know, the camera work, the editing. Um, you know, it's very, it's reffing in these experimental stages. Uh, he's not quite found his, his style, you know, 
perfected it, you know, you could say, or that style of his filmmaking, because um, he's got, you know, rough, roughly three different styles, you could say. You know, kind of Neon Demon, Only God Forgives, you know, kind of Drive and Bronson, you could say, are kind of similar sort of things. And then the rest of his films, you know, you can up and down, kind of. Uh, Valhalla Rising is kind of a thing on its own. Uh, we'll get to that. But that's got its own kind of weird mix. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's also got Mad, Mads Mikkelsen in it as well. But we'll get to that at some point. Uh, Pusher, though, you know, the first in the trilogy of the Pusher trilogy, uh, which I would highly recommend. Uh, this is the weakest one in the trilogy, I think. Um, and, you know, the, the character of Frank, um, <coughs> you know, he's, he's a fairly bland protagonist. Uh, and because, you know, it's mainly him that the film focuses on in the second half, um, yeah, it, 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 it overall amounts to, you know, a good film, this, uh, you know, Pusher. Pusher 1 is, is a good film, uh, nothing more, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a modest effort, you know. It's Reffin's first feature film, you know, his debut, and, you could, yeah, I, I guess he would be proud of this film because it is, it is good, uh, it is strong. And, you know, it does have some really unique stuff going on, uh, and it was, as I say, the first sort of Danish uh, gangster film. Um, you know, he's got some unique characters for sure. Mads Mikkelsen's character, you know, and actually in, in, in um, as well, Bleeder, you know, he plays characters that really are very unique in cinema. Um, there's never really quite been um, someone quite like him. Um, so, yeah, no, it is a unique film in places. It does stand out, but, you know, overall I feel that it's <coughs> it's a good film and it doesn't quite reach, uh, the con you know, the consistency of some of his other films. Um, and certainly not the... It's not as, as good as uh, Pusher 2 or 3. Um, which we'll review at some point. But yes, I would definitely recommend Pusher, um, and of course the Pusher trilogy, <coughs> you know, and if you want to see, you know, where Mads Mikkelsen began, uh, you know, and also, you know, <coughs> Nicholas Winden Refn, who's, yeah, he's kind of still an under-the-radar director. Um, I suppose he kind of, he likes to be at some point, you know, at some times. He, he does try and be out there and, and different and, and um, you know, his own thing. <coughs> and I don't think he cares too much about commercial success really, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing, you know, at times with him. Um, but no, over, overall I think that Refin, after seeing all of his films, um, including this one, you know, I think at times, well, overall he is a great director, a really great director. Um, he's done some stunning works. Um, but you know, there's quite a few of his films that aren't quite on the level. Um, and very, very uh, experimental. And, and, and yeah, there's a couple that I really don't like. Um, I really do not like. But we'll review them at some point, of course. Um, but Pusher, you know, for a debut feature, you know, it's no Reservoir Dogs or Badlands or, or anything like that, but it is a modest um, effort and uh, definitely a, a debut feature you, you'd, you'd be proud of. Um, I'm going to give this film a 74%. Um, so it's a good film, you know, I definitely recommend it. And it's got some really good characters, uh, of course. Um, really great writing at times. Um, you know, the use of music as well is, is, is really quite good. Um, and, you know, some of the lighting and stuff, but generally the, the camera work and stuff um, and the editing is something that really lets it down uh, throughout, really. Um, and I know it's kind of meant to, to be, you know, in the moment kind of thing. Um, and, it, you know, there's a couple of places it does work, uh, but generally, uh, you know, in cinema in general, I prefer, I don't like too much the shaky cam sort of stuff, the, you know, the documentary kind of style, you know, throughout an entire film. It can work, but I think, um, you know, certainly in this film, it, it really takes away uh, quite a lot of the time. And as well, you know, the fact, the fact that the second half is, is, is not nowhere near as good. <clears throat> and, and Frank is quite a boring protagonist um, at times. But, it's, you know, it still has some good stuff going on there. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a good rating because uh, it was, you know, the first half was very, very good. Second half was kind of average. Uh, so it balances out, you know. Good film, um, and definitely, uh, yeah, a, a solid start uh, to Refn. And, you know, his second film, Bleeder, um, is even better, uh, you know, much better, and I'll review that next. Um, so, thanks for watching my review of um, Nicholas Winden Refn's Pusher, and uh, we'll have some more reviews up um, very, very soon, and a couple of uh, Refn to come. So, thanks for watching.